Hello everyone, it's Garrett here with a little ditty on what's going on in the world and and uh, whatever else I have here. A couple things to uh, to talk on today and uh, one is about law enforcement. Um, those that are in charge, the authorities that exist. So first I'm going to read a quick thing from the Bible here of what the Bible says. Uh, let's see if you can see this, I don't know. You see that? That's Romans 13, okay? And it says, Let every soul be subject to the governing authorities, for there is no authority that exists except from God. And the authorities that exist are appointed by God. Therefore, whoever resists, whoever resists the authorities, resists the ordinance of God, and those who resist will be judgment out of hell. Okay? For rulers are not a terror to good works, but to evil. Do you want to be unafraid of the authority? Do what is good, and you will have praise from the same. For he is God's minister to you for good. But if you do evil, if you do evil, be afraid. For he does not bear the sword in vain. For he is God's minister and avenger to execute wrath on him who practices evil. Therefore, you must be subject, not only because of wrath, but also for conscious sake. For because of this, you also pay taxes, for they are God's ministers attending continually to this very thing. Render, therefore, to all their due, taxes to whom taxes are due, customs to whom customs, fear to whom fear, honor and respect to those who deserve honor and respect. Please read Romans 13, 1 to 7. Google it. Romans 13, 1 to 7. Because I'm I'm uh I'm a living example of uh how God uses authority to help those that are doing good, that that need help. Um God Instantly, sometimes we'll talk through those in authority if you go for help or or you need help. Remember that uh, even the RCMP are there to serve and protect each individual. They're not there to execute wrath on the just. They're not there to, to um, bring you down. I had a real life experience, okay? This is true story, true story here. Uh, I lived in a... a whole British Columbia. And, uh, you know, I was doing a, uh, you know, I, I was doing a few things back in the day, back in the, the nineties, let's say. And, uh, and, uh, you know, I had some un, un sketchy people coming around my property, sketchy people. Uh, one, even a BMW with a so-called detective, private detective, and just the strangest people, the strangest things would happen. So um, I remember I got into my Omni, my car, and a big bag of pot fell from my under my dash, you know, on my feet. So I'm like, hokey doodles. And then there's other bunch of other things that happened that I don't want to get into right now. So um, when I was growing up as just a little kid, as a 14, 13, 12 year old, uh, 15, 16, going to high school, there was a police officer back in South Burnaby. And he was known for a reputation. I mean, he would grab you by the ankles and shake you until those, you know, that hash would fall out of your jean pocket or whatnot. And he didn't, he didn't beat around the bush. He, he was all for law and justice, but he was a good guy. He was just a cop. He was doing his job. And, uh, you know, and I probably ran away from him at nighttime at the parties down on Burn Road or wherever we'd have parties. I was chased by cops and things like that. Just doing the kid stuff. That, nothing nothing bad or evil. So, so when this was happening at home, because I'm older now, this was like 1997, uh, and I'm 30-something years old, I, I phoned him up. And he, was, uh, he had an office job at South Burnaby. B.J. Brown. Um, but I says, you know, I told him the whole story and he just said, he just said two words. He says, leave Dodge. That's all. He said, leave Dodge. And then he said, I'll, 
talk to you in 15 years. I don't know what that meant because this was 23 years ago. Okay, so now I'm freaking out a little bit, you know, but I'm getting a little advice from those in authority that knows things that go on. So I called the RCMP chief of hope, the big guy, the you know, I said, this is Garrett. I'm up the Silver Skagit Road. Uh, can you come over here? I want to talk to you. Like I'm phoning the top dog, um, the sergeant or lieutenant or whatever, but he runs the whole whole British detachment. So he came over to my place, had someone with him. And I told him the story. I says, hey, this happened, that happened, this guy. You know, I got a detective coming around. And uh, he says, why don't you leave town, Garrett? He said, why don't you leave town? Like, I'm in my house, bought and paid for. Um, well, I think I had a mortgage. So this is an RCMP officer with the stripes. Why don't you leave town? So he leaves, and I'm like, okay, I'm out of here, right? So I had that place rented out in 48 hours, and I was in another town of Soyuz. Those two police officers, Witten, Witten was his name from the Hope RCMP detachment and B.J. Brown from Burnaby. They saved my life. Because I soon found out I was getting set up. Many of you, or some of you might have had this happen to you, being set up. You know, having a group of people having something on you one way or another. So you got to abide by their rules for the rest of your life. You know, you got to, you owe them, you know, whatever you do, right? But uh, I'm as free as can be. Nobody owns me. Nobody owns me. God in his Bible talks about justice. I don't know where I'm going with this, but I really had to, I really felt like um, talking about God and justice. And oh, I, the other day, the other day I made a phone call to the RCMP because I really had to get somewhere, okay, where you weren't supposed to go. And, 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 and I was put on hold. Someone came back, says, yeah, you got this and that. From the RCMP, they gave me the, the green light, and I had to get to this destination, and and you weren't allowed, but I got the go-ahead from those in authority. So uh, that saved, that that's, you know, I don't want to get personal, but we had to get there. So uh, anyways, I'm not going to say the name or the town, but I'll say thank you to whoever that person was on the other end of the phone that said, I could go. I had a free pass. The Bible again says in Psalm 82.3, I'm going to read some of these, okay? These are biblical scriptures, and I'm a biblical guy. I believe in Jesus, and he's following me, and I'm going to go to heaven, and this is all my life right now is the Bible, is God. And, and God talks about justice. He says, give justice to the weak and the fatherless. Maintain the right of the afflicted and the destitute. Uh, that's Psalm 82, 3. Isaiah 1, 17 says, Learn to do good. Seek justice. Correct oppression. Bring justice to the fatherless. And please the widow's cause. Okay, here's Micah 6, 8. Micah. He has told you, O man, what is good. And what does the Lord require of you? But to do justice. And to love kindness. And to walk humbly with your God. Luke eleven forty two says, but woe to you, Pharisees, for you tithe mint and rue in every herb and neglect justice and the love of God. These you ought to have done without neglecting the others. Well, that one's a little difficult. But a long story short, in this 10 minutes before the news, the RCMP and those that are in authority, even government officials, okay, are, are, um, are there to do good. And if they're owned, and if they're... They did an oath or got caught somewhere and someone has something on them. God will make it work out that they'll have to do good to one that God's watching. God exposes evil. He brings justice and vengeance to those in need, the weak, the humble, and the poor. And uh, I have I known this for my life. Uh, they've never done me wrong. Um, if in the past I deserved it, I got a spanking, you know, through, uh, through things. Anyways, 
We're going to get to the news right now. I don't know if you know this, but the United Nations. Oh, hold on here. Uh, boy, I just, I was running around the house. I had to do this ditty. I just felt like it. So I talked about law enforcement. And remember, read it. 13, Romans 13. Please read it. It's right from the Bible. Paul wrote it. You got to, um, you got to read it. Because it's a great scripture. The police are there for a reason. It's tough for them, though. Some of the honest ones, though, it's tough. You know, when they, they help someone like me out or something like that, you know, there's always a group of other ones that have something to, someone to save or something to hide. You know, they, they want to help their people that are in the group. So then, it, you know, the, the good ones kind of get cast to the wayside. Like, I think Witten, who saved my life, I think because of that, they made him a traffic cop in, in, in Richmond. I could be wrong. I'm botting off. If you're listening to me, I'm sorry, um, but you saved my life. Okay, here we go. News. Uh, am I going to do this news? You know what? I love you guys. I think that's all I'm doing right now. The world's going on. It's ticking by. Things are progressing. There's like three or four, six or more earthquakes in the last 48 hours. The sun uh, put off an X-class flare, non-Earth facing, but close. And now those holes, corona holes, are coming around Earth facing. Guys, you got to be careful with that sun. I mean, it, it shoots off these... these uh, uh, these flares, an X-class flares, would put all the power out in North America, burnt a lot of copper wires. That was an X-15, I believe. Uh, the Carrington event, Google it. And this one that went off today, earlier today, was an X-1 flare. So the radio went out um, over North America, ham radios, high-frequency radios, marine radios, marine radios. Uh, New Brunswick, off the coast of Nova Scotia, where, where the Titanic is. Have you all heard? There's a there's a sub, a tourist sub, that's gone missing with uh, at least five people in it. At the bottom of the ocean where the Titanic is. And they only have, uh, many hours ago, they only had 90 hours of air left. And they don't know where it is. They, uh, a Rolling Stone magazine said there was, uh, there was like, you know, taps. like. They were listening to that kind of thing. So that's scary, you guys. Uh, you know, a sub way that far down, there's a billionaire on it. Yeah, there's a billionaire that's on it. Um, so I hope I hope they rescue them. Uh, I've got, I, I, you know, a bit of claustrophobic and I, I, you know, you could freak out, especially if you're stuck in the mud or a submarine, a little submarine isn't working. Um, so let's pray for them tonight that they get get out of there okay. Uh, yeah, the fire situation someone mentioned. Uh, I don't see any smoke. I'm in Tumblr Ridge. We had a fire. We were out for a few days, um, and they put it they put it out. They put it did a good job on it, and uh, I don't see any smoke or anything like that. So uh, let's take another day. Uh, we know that the fire season is uh, upon us. A little early for that matter. And uh, and uh, so you all have a good day out there, and uh, I'll talk to you later. All right. <laughs> just watching a police officer just drove, drove up Kaskatna here. My, cool. All right. Have a good day, you guys.